Hello, welcome to this update video for Game Launcher Creator V3. My name is Danny J. I'm the lead developer for Game Launcher Creator V3. Uh, and I thought it was appropriate for me to give you an update video as to where we're at. Uh, because uh, you will have seen over the last two to three months um, that we've been so excited to um, show you Game Launcher Creator V3 and the capabilities that it uh, that it holds, uh, that we did get a little bit optimistic at times, um, but just got a little bit giddy, a bit excited, like you do. Uh, but, I mean, you've got to remember, I've worked on this literally all year, 2022, the whole year. I'm talking sleepless days and nights. Sometimes ploughing in average 70, 80 hours a week, literally a week, uh, to get this done. Now, it's not only the software that needs to... To, to get developed um, and tested and the run times and everything else we've got to do the licensing the installers and then we've got a separate plugin system as well as you know now um, so we can have future plugins and stuff for game launcher creator um, there's all that and then there's the website as well I mean the website alone I've got to revamp the whole entire website as you can see on here I'm using our development server um to to do the new website so the whole new website needs doing as well which is everything not just showcasing game launcher creator as a product but obviously all the licensing and the ordering system and the emails and everything else is just it's just mind-blowing the amount of work that's done and i'm way overdue a holiday but let's get into the nitty-gritty of stuff uh, and let's get you updated on where we are up to right now with game launcher creator v3 so as you'll know we had our first pre-order discount window um, um, just before Christmas and we've shipped them pre-orders out now to um, the people that pledged because uh, you know they, they did they did pledge and we did have an estimated release uh, time of uh, December but we wasn't unable to hit that so we released it anyway to the current pre-orders at that time because we thought that was a fair thing to do um, even though we wasn't 100% happy with the products and you know technically it is kind of unfinished uh, but at least they've all got to grips with that now everybody seems happy that they've got the copy of the software um, they, they, they are aware that there are a few things that aren't linked up and not working uh, properly yet because we've not linked them up uh, there's a lot of stuff to do right at the very end before we do the public release where we link everything up so everything works flawlessly um, and we have our final um, pre-order window open right now where you can pre-order um, your own edition of Game Launcher Creator V3 uh, with massive discounts I mean when this goes on public release uh, the full price will be in effect so if you if you are contemplating uh, getting your hands on this awesome piece of software, I would highly recommend getting it in now. Uh, especially for the developer edition, seems to be flying out the window. I mean, that seems to be the most popular one. Um, and people are snatching the developer edition up with a massive 50% off. So it's definitely worth um, investing it into. Um, you know, because again, it's a lifetime license, um, like we've always operated on lifetime licenses. So once you've got the software and you've got your license key, then that is yours for life. Um, so it's definitely worth uh, getting into on that so let's just uh, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take you over the new website because that will kind of act like a cue card for me as well so i can kind of like talk about certain features uh, as we go through this video um, and as you can see it's a whole new uh, different layout now different design for the game launcher creator website um, and this is to remain consistent with the branding uh, so we have a whole new mega menu up here now on the website, uh, as you can see. So hopefully this will be a lot easier for people to navigate. So for example, um, you can just hover over the features and it'll pop up with all the features. Not all the features actually, because there's too many, but there's a view all features here. Or you can just click on a certain one and it'll take you to that feature on the website. Um, screenshots, videos and a product tour of the actual software. And then we have the editions, so you can quickly access Gamer Edition, Indie, or Developer Edition. And then you can even compare the editions as well to see which features are in which edition. Um, and then we have our Developers section here for the Unity, uh, Unreal, uh, Godot, uh, Game Maker, Fusion, Game Guru, uh, people out there, RPG Maker as well, AGK. Um, and then we have our Gaming section as well for all our Minecraft users, um, GTA 5M, Valheim. Uh, Counter-Strike, Gary's Mod, Rust, the list is endless. Um, so we have a few old games there as well because there's just too many games we support. Um, and then we've got a resources section. I'm working on this right now. So this is the final bit on this front end to be done. And then a support section as well. So hopefully 
um, all these new uh, links will be able to guide you faster to where it is that you need to go um, and learn all about Game Launcher Creator. Uh, so let's just fly down here and let's just take a look at some of the things that this new software can do. So obviously we've inherited a lot of the original um, stuff from the original Game Launcher Creator series, so from V1, V2 and onwards. Uh, so we've stuck with the drag and drop editor, but as you know now, the drag if you've seen the previous videos and the previous screenshots, um, I've written the engine uh, for the editor from scratch. So we have a brand new editor interface now, um, and I've put as many of the features what people asked for in the past into that, so now you can um, do stuff like uh, you can drag and drop without accidentally clicking on other objects uh, we have 10 layers now and a, and a full layering system as well so you can completely layer objects um and there's there's just an, there's just too many enhancements but we might be able to go through that on the side if i can show you the preview um obviously it's going to come with um some launcher templates um i think for the public release uh, it might it's probably just going to come with some basic ones for now because i can't import over the ones from v2 so well i can but i'll have to do it manually so it's probably gonna i reckon it's gonna be one to two weeks after the public release when we'll start seeing some proper templates because we've had some guys um on board with us that have been designing some awesome looking templates so they're gonna get integrated straight into v3 for you um now these three here are probably the th three of the most powerful features inside game launch creator v3 uh, and that's event actions advanced logic and the new php query system so the advanced logic uh, i've got to start with this one because this is basically where it all stems from so advanced logic inside game launch creator now you can specify when certain events happen then you can make event actions happen as well so if you remember in v1 and v2 basically you would just have um like a button um, you can put a button in your launcher and then you would specify what happens when the user clicks on that button so we obviously we, we realized that um, developers needed a lot more um, a lot more of a playing field um, in this area so we've developed a new advanced logic and event action system so basically now when a user clicks a button you, you don't only have to specify one thing to happen you can specify multiple things to happen so for example you might want to launch your game and minimize the launcher and stop the background music. You can do all that in one event uh, and you can specify that in any order as to what you want to do. Or you might want to say, when a user launches the game, exit the launcher. Um, so you can exit the you can launch the game and then exit the launcher. Um, it, it basically opens up an entire world of development possibilities as to what you can and can't do. And there's no such thing as can't do really with V3 because everything's possible. There's not a scenario that we've thought of that can't be done. Um, you know, if you remember in V2, uh, the current software, you, you know, when there's an update available, the patching system launches. Well, inside V3, it doesn't do that automatically anymore. I mean, you can do if you want, or you can, take over in developer mode and go right i'm going to look for the global event an update is available and it'll flag it up that, that's, that's your condition so then what you can do is then you can say well when an update is available you can launch the patching system change the page minimize the launcher do whatever you want and in any order as well and there's all different settings for those actions as well so basically when something happens you're in complete control now of um you know when an event has been triggered, what happens after that event. Um, and it's all instant as well. It's all in real time. There's no loading times. There's nothing like that. So you could have 25 actions and they'll all execute in order. Bam, 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 bam. One, two, three, four, five, and they'll all execute in order in the same frame loop as well. So there's no messing about. The only time it does pause is if you tell it to pause. So for example, you might want to run an application and pause the action list until the application's finished and then continue. So that's what I mean. There's a whole host of, but I've covered this in a couple of the previous videos, uh, which you'll be able to look at. Um, but yeah, we have so many different possibilities now. For example, another example, just off the top of my head, like my, you might have a say an update button in your launcher um, on the first page. Now you could get at the start of the page, you could get 
the launcher to check for the updates. And if the update's available, you can make that update button disappear because you don't want the user clicking on the update button if you're going to do it automatically. So in inside the event actions, you can also tell it to show and hide objects as well. So you can hide objects until they're needed. Like, for example, if you want to integrate um, your game patcher into your actual launcher window, then you can say, when an update is available, hide all the objects, but show the progress bar and show the update string. And then, so then when the user runs the launcher and there's an update available, it'll hide all the objects and it'll show the progress bar that you've put in and the text string that you've put in as well. Um, and the text strings are dynamic as well, which is awesome. So, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so the power, so now the PHP queries are even more powerful, especially in developer edition, because not only can you ping a PHP file online like you could do in V2, but now you can send queries with it as well. So for example, especially with the developer edition again, um, you can there's a new text box object. So you can create your own login screens and you can take the data from the text box and attach it to the PHP query string. So if, for example, um, let me see if I can get Notepad up here so I can just quickly show you an example of what I'm talking about. So you might have two text boxes, one that's username, oops, and one that's password. And then you might have a button that says connect. So then you can stipulate in V3 what happens when the user clicks connect button. So it'll be uh, connect, clicked. This is not how it looks, I'm just doing this for visual purposes. You can then say query, so you could go mysite.com. Um, connect.php and then what you can do is you can send the username over from the text box what the user put in um, like that and then you could do a plus um, pass equals and then password and then what you can do is inside v3 is you can wait for the query so you wait for the query return spell it right what is going on today? Not enough coffee. Query return. Wait for query return. And you can say that if the query return is active, then you can stipulate what happens when, when it's active. So then we can then change page and take, we can say, yeah, the user is allowed to connect. So we can change the page to page two. You can do whatever. There's all these possibilities. So you can send, you know, you can send dynamic information along with your PHP queries and then you can wait for the returns as well and then stipulate what to do when that return happens so endless possibilities there is literally no limits really um, with uh, what you can do inside game launcher creator v3 so now that i've covered them three aspects which i'm kind of glad i managed to do in just a few minutes um, we've got the new advanced patching system as well so AOPS in V2 obviously does its job. It's a good little patching system. Um, and after V2 was developed initially four years ago, um, obviously we created the new um, a new software, which was Game Patch Creator, which was a more professional patching solution. So obviously when we came to developing V3, it was like, well, what do we do? Uh, we still need a patching system. Um, so we it was two things. It was either we could sell V3 as a product and you know say well you know you can get game patch creator and link them together um that didn't work well with me i think I, I think that game launcher creator as a product always needs to have a patching system built in so what we've done this time is i've taken um the base framework which i created for game patch creator which is super fast um and then i've improved even more on it for game launch creator v3 so the advanced patching system inside v3 now is mega powerful you can have stuff especially for the developer edition you can have stuff like multiple servers um you can do um, game versioning so for example you can let your user choose which version to install the rollbacks everything like that is crazy and you can now integrate the advanced patching system directly into your launcher window so you you can d design the patching window exactly how you would a game launcher page and you have progress bars you have dynamic text strings there's all sorts to be had so it's um, it's just yeah it's just it's a very this is this is probably the most powerful software uh, i've worked on today i mean this is for the foreseeable future now so 
you know, it's it's this is this is why we were so excited to to uh, announce it at the back end of last year. And now obviously we have the plugin support as well. So this will be so basically what will happen is in the future um, we might have a new feature that we want to develop. So there's two ways we can go about it. We can either integrate it into one or more of the additions, or we can just sell it as a th uh, we could just sell it as a plugin. Uh, but then we also this it also enables you if you're an experienced developer to create your own plugins as well. And when you create your own plugins, you can either create your own plugins. Um, just for your private, your own private use that you know what does whatever it needs to do, or um, you can develop plugins for the community. So you can create plugins for V3 and then sell them on the store. Um, which you, you know, it just expands the the possibilities of V3 for many years to come. Um, and I know there's a few that we've got lined up already. We've got the Steam plugin that'll be released with the public release. 5M uh, and Minecraft, uh, their third-party plugins. We're still waiting on the developers uh, finishing a few bits up with them, but um, they do work. We, we have, we've done all our tests that we need to do. They, they work fine. They just There's a couple of touch-ups that need to be done. Um, and so we're just waiting for the third-party developers on that. Um, but then we have, you know, we already have developers lined up already that are saying, well, you know, I want to develop a plugin. So we have a Patreon plugin, which is currently being uh, looked into. There's no confirmation 100% on that yet, but I have been working with the third party developer uh, doing a couple of tests and stuff. So there's a Patreon plugin, which looks like we've got to look forward to, which is good because I think you'll be able to do things like um, let the user log in via Patreon and then, you know, de depending on what their membership level is, you can give them access to certain pages in the launcher. It's phenomenal. And this is, this is what I'm saying, the power of V3 uh, is incredible going forward. Um, and I'm really, really excited for, for people to get their hands on it. Um, what else have we got here? So yeah, so we've got the new layer editing system. So in V2, you had five layers and you literally just chose the layer in the object properties. Well, now inside the editor, you can actually visually see the layers. So you have a drop down with one to 10 on the layers. So you can hide all the layers um, or you can hide particular layers. So if you want to design, for example, the background on, on layer one, you can design all that. And then when you finish with it, you can just hide it and then you can carry on with layer two, layer three, four or five and whatnot. Um, and we have the new locking object feature inside the editor as well now, which is a lot better than the V2 one, which was a bit shaky. Um, but the new locking feature is awesome because you can lock the object down and it will save in the locked state um, until you unlock it. So even if you even if you finished editing the launcher and you close down GLC V3, when you reopen your project back up, they'll still be locked until you unlock it. Um, so yeah, lots to look forward to in the editor, including uh, we've got this new toolbar here. So this, when you select an object, this toolbar pops up um, and you can move, you can resize, lock, get the settings. You can even duplicate the object so you can clone an object and quickly delete as well. And it's also a grid based movement for the new editor as well. So you can specify a grid that you want to work with uh, and you can override that grid at any time just by holding down the shift key. So it'll, if you hold down the shift key, then there won't be any grid snapping. Um, another beauty about V3 is multi-language um, support. So it, it it's full Unicode support now, which is highly beneficial for, especially like our Korean users and Chinese users, um, you know, and, and, and Polish users as well. Basically any kind of language um you know it supports both on the editor and in the run times as well um so you're not going to get any issues with any strange characters being used for your game launchers and also the whole software is translatable so in the preferences you can simply just click on this drop down and choose which language you want the the editor to display all the texts in um and another beauty about the way i've developed this language system is you can modify the translations yourself um, so if you're originally German, for example, um, then you can translate all the text yourself and then you can even share that um, them translations with the community as well. So if you think that, you know, if you think that your German um, is better than what we've uh, shipped it with, then that's fine. Go ahead and change it and you can even share it with the community um, so they can download your translations as well. Um, another little powerful feature. 
This just goes over the conditional logic and events again, because we'd really like to showcase this on the site. Um, but again, as you can see here, like the examples I give you before, you know, you can wait for an update available condition to trigger, and then you can tell it what to do. So open patching system, send the patching system some command lines, completely customized, and then you can tell it to minimize the launcher. There's all sorts you can do. Uh, the advanced query strings, we've just covered them. Um, here's another one, system and custom variables. So this is another great feature as well, a new feature. So basically inside the new runtime for the developer edition is, um, well, I, I think the, some of these are available for the gamer and indie editions as well. But I know with developer edition, you can do custom variables. Um, so you can get information from the user's, user's computer, such as um, certain paths to directories and stuff like that. Um, and then you can create your own um, variables as well. And you can send these variables out with your PHP queries online. Um, and you can do all sorts with it. I'm going to probably have to cover this extensively with tutorials. So that's probably going to take me about another two months to do. But we'll cover that once it's released. So we've got all the legacy objects in as well. Um, what you're used to from V2. So we've got the image buttons, images, text strings. Text strings are a lot more powerful now as well because you can have left, center and right align on the text strings. And they also support multi-line as well. So you're no longer limited to just one line text strings. Same with the query strings, obviously the, the PHP ones, but again, you can use multi-line support um, and um, multi-line support. Um, I've lost I've lost what you had, I thought. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically the same. Oh, oh, and left center and right alignments are in there as well. Um, GIFs are still supported. Videos, you can have local videos or cloud videos stream straight from your web server. Same with the images, you can do cloud image if you want. We've got a standard web view in there as well, just for compatibility reasons. That ships with all the additions. Um, and speaking of web view, we also have a new WebKit Plus plugin, uh, which is the new Chromium based um, web browser. So you can now display more up-to-date um, websites and technologies inside your launcher, such as um, HTML5 and CSS3, full support for Elementor websites and all that kind of jazz. Um, and that's, that's available as a third-party plugin that's separate from um, the product. But if you um, pre-order the developer edition now, before the public release, we're going to throw the WebKit Plus plugin in for you for free. Um, so yeah, we've got some new objects as well. Now we have a new text button. So um, remember, we've got the image buttons where you can choose the three image states. So you've got standard, hover, and click. Well, now we have a new text button, which you can put into your launcher. This is available for all editions. Um, and you can, you can drag and drop it into your launcher, and then you can change the text on the button yourself and change the color as well. Uh, we have a new Steam object, which is coming out. Uh, that allows you to connect and liaise with Steam games that are in the red, via the registry. Um, so you'll be able to install launch Steam games. We have a new edit box object, and so this one is for the developer edition, where you can have a text box inside your launcher and a new progress bar as well. Um, and this bit just talks about the third-party plugins. So we have an icon changer plugin as well. Um, this feature is enabled for indie and developer versions. Um, so if you're running the game, the gamer edition, you're going to have to purchase the um, the plugin for that. Um, we've got the web kit, we've got the Discord rich presence. I can't go through all these right now because we'll be here all day, but uh, the Discord rich presence, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you can connect to your app, um, your developer app inside Discord. So basically you can tell people, you can tell update statuses on Discord when people are using your game launcher uh, and funky, funky stuff like that. There's a lot more to it. I'm not really too well versed with the Discord stuff, um, but we'll get around to that. That will be available on release I'd imagine um, so yeah so obviously we have full support for our game developers um, game developers and gamers as well um, I don't think I've missed anything out on the features there if you click on features or view all features it'll take you to the features page where you can uh, specify all this now obviously this is my developer site so you you'll not be able to see this this is not on actually live um, it won't be live until the public release um, <clears throat> I don't think there's anything I've missed out that I haven't covered in the last 25 minutes. 
I'm sorry if I seem to be going on. I just there's just so much to tell you about, and I'm trying to contain it all, the best I can. Um, let's just jump to the um, compare editions, so you can compare the editions, um, and you can upgrade at any time as well. So anytime you want to upgrade. So if you bought the indie edition, for example, you want to upgrade to dev, all you got to do is pay the difference, that's fine. So this is this will be the feature comparison page. You can actually view this comparison table on the V3 pre-order discount page, which I'll link in the description of this video. So if you want to go ahead and go and get your um, your discount, your 50% discount now on the pre-order, you can do. Um, this just basically says what's available. See, there's features I've not even talked about yet that i've missed out like the hover and click sound effects we now have for buttons so you can specify sound effects that play when a user hovers over the button or clicks on it we also have joypad support as well um but i don't think that i i know that's ready i'm trying to think off the top of my head here i know that's ready i've already coded it into the run times i think i need to code that into the launch the editor um so it is ready to go I'll, I'll, I'll have to take a look at that. But we will have Joypad support as well. So if you want to create a, uh, a launcher that has Joypad controller, game controller support, uh, your users can navigate through the buttons and other objects with the uh, with the gamepad. Um, yeah, more information here on the patching system. So the developer edition comes with patch compression now as well, so you can compress your update files. Uh, and I th the test went really good because we use LZMA2 plus uh, compression. Uh, so I think one of the games was around um, 1,200 meg, I think it was. I think it was 1.2 gig, and we managed to get that down to 200 meg. So it's a massive difference for your game update. You know what I mean? You're saving, you say, well, we saved one gig there, so you're saving one gig of bandwidth per download, and and much faster downloads for your updates. You know, uh, command line switches, parallel patching. Again, I can't really go all into all this right now because we'll be here forever. But um, yeah, because the the way I've coded the new AOPS patching system is it's now based on workers. If you remember in the in the V2 AOPS edition. Um, I coded it so it was a more of a linear download format. So if you had, say, a 1,000 files on your game update, it would go through each one of the 1,000 files file by file. Well, now the developer edition contains parallel patching, so it can download more than one file and check the integrity of more than one file at once. And the speed of the, the file integrity checks is absolutely ludicrous. I managed to scan a game folder... Uh, for it to do to check, you know, if any files needed patching, and I think I managed to scan around two thousand files a second. That's how fast AOPS can check files, around two thousand files a second. So yeah, it's fast. Uh, we've also got any support for developer as well. So you can, you know, if you're going to use them text boxes in your launcher, you can save what the user's writing in those text boxes to an any file, so that when they reload the launcher again, you can load that data up from the ini file stuff like custom tool tips um, and advanced images as well advanced images is a really good one i know a lot of people were asking for this in the past uh, so basically when you do a, a get query from the server it might return say online and it will just display the text online inside your launcher well now what you can do is you can say if the return query it says online you can display an image because a lot of people wanted to display an online image instead of text. And you could do that now with the developer edition. Uh, there's also stuff like data file encryption. And obviously you get the commercial reseller license as well with the developer edition. So you can build um, game launches for other users, other companies, other businesses, whatever. And you can resell them on no problem at all. You can't do that with the gamer and the indie edition, but you can do it with the developer one um so yeah there's i've put the i've put a quick frequently asked questions in on the site wherever i could possibly because i know people have questions so i've tried to fit as much as i can in um but that's pretty much it for now so i don't want to bore you too much just half an hour of me rambling on talking about the new product but i felt like it was very important for me to just let you know that we're still working around the clock every single day i mean i'll give you an example literally typing at the speed of light 
And today I had to go through the email template system for the store. You know, the emails that you get, like when you place an order or when you renew and all that kind of stuff. And even typing at the speed of light, it's taken me six hours today to do about eight of those. And there's about another 29 to do. So you can see the amount of work that we have to do, not just for the software, but for the website and everything, just to make sure everything comes together. So we are really, really, really hoping by the end of January, we will have the public release ready to go because believe me, I am more than happy to get this out, but we don't want to release it when it's not 100%. As you, as you could probably understand, you don't want us to release a product um, that, you know, it's just, just there's bits missing, bits don't work and whatnot. And obviously, we're going to expect when we launch it, there's going to be bug reports and stuff because even though we've got the beta testers that have been testing and doing all the tests that they can, we can't possibly cover every single computer setup and every scenario going. So there's going to be bug reports flying in and I'm prepared for that. As soon as the public release goes out, I'm going to clear a two-week window, straight two-week window, just to deliver hot fixes. So as soon as someone comes in and says, this doesn't work because of this X, Y, Z, boom, I'm going to be on it. I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to get the hot fix out there. So there's going to be loads of updates to come, especially in the first month of the public release, which I'm ready for. I'm on standby and I'm ready to do that. Let's get this out of the way first. I highly recommend that you check out the link below in the description of this video so you can go ahead and pre-order your 50% discount now with the lifetime license for Game Launcher Creator V3. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.